Hey guys, Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. Yes, yes, yes. Now, this is going to be of particular interest to you guys. I had a lot of comments about uh, vintage two hose. When people think about vintage scuba, they usually think about two hose regulator. This, this is the image of vintage scuba, right? Like it or not, it is. Um, and I got a lot of comments, a lot of questions from, from you folks out there. Thank you very much for watching, by the way. Uh, asking, uh, what should I buy? Or I get a comment that says, I have a friend who has a regulator and uh, it's in pretty good shape and I don't know what I sh if I should buy it or not. Or, uh, yes, uh, an old man down the street tried to sell me a regulator and he wants, uh, is that too much? And those kind of questions, you know. So let me see if I can clear up a couple of things in this short little video. I'm going to keep this video short. It's really simple, okay. Vintage regulators, specifically two hose regulators in this case, two hose vintage regulators. What should I buy? What should you buy? Okay? First thing you have to ask yourself is, do I want to buy this for display purposes, for a collection to show people, to play with and to look at and to enjoy, or do I want to go diving with it? Do I want to use it? Do I want to take it out for the club dive? That's the first thing you have to ask, because that's the defining division right off the bat. And the reason for that is very simple. If you want to buy, if you want to get a regulator, a vintage two-hose regulator, for display purposes, to hang on the wall, so you can tell your grandchildren you used to be a frogman, or whatever reason you may have, for a collection, perhaps, maybe you already have a collection, you're trying to expand, if you want to buy a regulator for that purposes, then buy whatever regulator appeals to you. Make, model, price, whatever it happens to be. Buy whatever you want, because it's not going to be used, right? It's going to be displayed. However, if you're going to buy a regulator, a vintage two-hose regulator to use, you have to be much, much more specific. You have to be much more careful. And the reason is very simple. You can use some vintage two-hose regulators, but you can't use others. Now, let me qualify that. Technically, if you buy any double-hose regulator and it's in excellent working condition, you can go diving with it. So, technically, if you want to go diving, any reg will do, right? No, it won't do. The likelihood of you finding a vintage double hose regulator, the production of which was stopped at the very latest, 1974 or 75, and in most cases prior to that, prior to 1970, so shall we say 1970 for argument's purposes, 45 years ago. So the likelihood of you finding a vintage double hose regulator, 45 years old, in good working condition is slim. Once in a long time it happens, I would be offered or see or find or buy a regulator that hasn't been used for 45 years or maybe has been used sparingly, 45 years old minimum, right? But it's been spare, it's been stored and, and, and uh, taken care of perfectly. Well dried, well rinsed, well dried, stored out of the sunlight, out of the heat, sealed in a plastic bag. When you take it out of the bag, it comes out just the way it went in 45 years ago. But that's extremely rare. Very rare. It's, for all intents and purposes, it doesn't happen. So, you again have to decide. Display purposes or to use. Now, if it's for display purposes, go on out there go crazy. A couple of regulators are particularly nice. Right here. You've seen some of these in our prior videos. This is a beautiful North Hill Airlung. Solid bronze, stainless steel screws, excellent hoses, unique flip mouthpiece that allows you to turn off the air and, and have a venturi. Built-in reserve, operated by a cord. It came with a cord. Just a beautiful, beautiful regulator. Heavy, well-built, dependable, solid, and a collector's item rare. Every collector eventually wants to get a North Hill air lung. Beautiful for display. Cleaned up, mounted on a piece of wood or in a glass case. Beautiful regular for display. The, the, the uh, uh, Healthways series. There are, I think there's four if not five regulars in the Healthways series. Big, big, well-known company in the 60s and 70s, Healthways. This is one of their later models. Not the latest, but one of the later models. It has actually on here the word deluxe because the same model came out 
prior to this. This came out with a couple extra features and it was called the Deluxe. The stickers on this are in excellent shape. It's called the Scuba. This regular is called the model name Scuba. Yeah. Scuba was just invented in the 60s. The word was just invented in the, in the late 50s, early 60s. It wasn't well known. The Healthways came along and their two-hose line was called Scuba. They had different models based on that. Excellent regulator for display purposes. Beautiful. Some were heavy, heavy uh, uh, chrome. Some were satin. Uh, earlier ones had a, had a beautiful painted uh, uh, metal bronze and painted label on them. The later ones had a stick on top of label. A lot of the early ones had a had a Hope Page mouthpiece, a special mouthpiece. Beautiful regulator for display for your collection. Maybe you want to get the whole series of four or five of them. So there's a couple of examples of regulators that you might want to add to your collection. But no good for diving. Why not? Well, very simple. You can't get servers and parts for them. That's right. There is a fairly active aftermarket reproduction parts availability of some regulators but not these and in fact not very many very few in fact so if you want to take one of these two regulators diving with you the first step is to get it serviced problem number one very few if anyone will or even has the ability to service it if your friend down the street who's been diving for 35 or 40 years says oh i can fix that up give it to me and he heads off to his garage grabs his pliers and screwdrivers, you've just lost, possibly lost, a beautiful regulator. Service is not available. But even more importantly, even if you try to service it, you can't get any parts. So the diaphragm is possibly gone. They usually are. Can't get a diaphragm. The high-pressure seat, impossible to find. Can't make them. Very impossible to make for the average person anyway, or even the professional. Impossible to make. Exhaust valves, hoses to fit, mouthpieces, all of those parts which are essential to proper service and subsequent safe use, not available. So they're collection pieces, understand? Uh-huh. Okay, for the rest of you guys out there, now, I'm not interested in collecting these things. I want to go diving with one. Fine, I'm with you. I'm with you on it. It's fun to dive with a 2 hose regulator. We just did a short series, I think it was on Tech Tips, I think, Kevin, on the... Uh, on uh, Kevin's Aquamaster that he had used and then he upgraded it with the Phoenix. Let me tell you about that in a minute. So if you want to go diving with your two-hose regulator, let me tell you there are lots and lots of divers out there who dive with two-hose regulators. In fact, some of my good friends, Rob is one example, and there's others as well, they dive exclusively with two-hose regulators. I'm not even sure if Rob owns a single hose, but anyway, he dives all over the world. Just came back from Truck Lagoon, deep Technical dives using nothing but a two-hose regulator. So if that's what you'd like to do, you want to try or get into vintage diving using the regulators, then you need to be a lot more selective. As you're out there watching on wherever it is and some of the auction sites or friends, wherever it happens to be, you want to use the regulator for diving, then you need to restrict your search to two specific makes and maybe even more so to two to to some specific models the two makes very simple first of all if you can keep your eyes open for a good voight regulator very popular brand in the 60s very very popular well-known regulator this is a regulator used by mike nelson and sea hunt many many series voight regulator and the reason is again to reiterate you can get parts and service that's right. You see the hose here is cracked. No big deal. I have a new one here tomorrow afternoon. 30 bucks. New hoses. New hoses. I even get them in silicone so they never crack again. And the other model is U.S. divers. Now, U.S. divers made regulators for a long time. Going back, gosh, into the late 40s, certainly the early 50s, right up until 75. They were, I think, anyway, I'm not exactly sure, but I think they were probably the last company to make double hose regulators. And their regulators were used worldwide, literally worldwide. A lot of military organizations used their regulators. They gained a, a very good reputation, uh, good marketing partly, but good reputation as well. So there were millions of these made. And there were dozens and dozens of different models. I don't know how many, but dozens of different models. So if you want to get a reg for a vintage reg for diving, get a U.S. diver if you can. And now, even more specifically, try to get a late model. So it's something made in the 70s. This particular one is a, an Aquamaster. This is called a round label. It's called a round label because the label is round. 
As you know, not all divers are dumb, huh? <laughs> Maybe the earlier labels were a square brass plate that was riveted onto the box. Then in the 70s or so, they changed the round label regulars. Try to get one of these. There are a couple of models. This is the Aquamaster. Another one's called the Royal Aquamaster. Uh, mechanically, there's not uh, a whole world of difference. In terms of diving, there's not a really big difference either. But that's, this, this is what you would like to get. And probably, if you have a choice, and there are more of these available than Voights. Voights tend to be expensive because of their history, sea hunt and the rarity and so on. So you're probably more easily going to find one of these. An Aqualung, U.S. divers, Aqualung, Aquamaster. Late model, round label. You get one of these. Now these are available, lots of them available. And you see them many ranging anywhere from $100 to, I mean, I've seen some silly prices, three, four, five hundred dollars $500. I think that's a little bit crazy. There's a lot of them. They're not exactly rare. So if you can get your hands on a decent, decent condition, it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry about the hoses. You're going to replace them anyway. But the body itself is not all marked up, not beat, not bent, not badly corroded, not going green. Everything seems to work. Try the knob and so on. Everything seems to be there uh, for a decent price. A hundred, hundred and fifty, certainly under two hundred dollars uh, for something like that. Now you're well on your way to having a good working double hose regulator. If it comes to you in perfect condition and you're very careful, put it on a tank and give it a try. Not 3,000 PSI, put it on a tank that has no more than 2,500 PSI and give it a try see if it works. It might inhale. Hard to say how well. It may or may not exhale. Usually the duct bill valve, the exhalation valve, is one of the first items to go and it sticks shut. So you'll know it's going to need a bit of service. Those parts are all available. And very reasonably as well. In fact, you can send this regulator in to a variety of companies, just two or three companies out there that specialize into them, and say, hey, make it work. And you'll get it back in a few weeks. And I would guess probably for another 150, 200 bucks, I'm just guessing here roughly, you will have a good working model in your hands. New hoses, new mouthpiece, new exhaust valves, new seat, all tuned up, ready to go. Uh, there's all the information about that particular aspect of diving with vintage regulars is available on uh, on the internet. I would suggest you go to uh, my my friend Brian in Florida at vintagedoublehose.com. Just go to vintagedoublehose.com, and he's all kinds of information on there. The information I've just shared you with you is on there. The history of these regulars, which ones are good, the parts list. You can buy them right online. You can talk to Brian online about getting them service and so on. So that's a great place to start. That's probably your best bet right there. Um, as an example, and why would you want to do that? If it's in decent working condition, it gives you wear. Why would you want to get it serviced? Well. A couple of reasons. First of all, these regulators, even the late model ones in 1975, had no provision for pressure gauges or for BCD inflators or for safe seconds or any of the extra accessories, which today, if you're diving with a group today or from a charter boat uh, today, you need to have. There's no way around it. Don't get upset when the guy says, hey, you can't dive with that old thing. It hasn't got a BC inflator. That's his job. His job is to keep you and the other divers and his business safe. That's his job. He's not giving you a hard time. You, know, you can say, I've been diving for 65 years and this reg's always worked. Wonderful. Nice piece of history. Nice to meet you. Not on my boat. He has every right to do that and he should do that. So don't get upset. Some of you guys out there have had this conversation with some of you. Don't get upset. It's the way it is. No more than if you were out driving with your Model T Ford on the 101 in Los Angeles, cruising along nicely at 35 miles an hour with cable operated brakes. No, no directional signals, no wind, and so on. No, not going to work. So what you can do is take your regulator and you can have it upgraded. With a Again, this is available information on vintagedoublehose.com to what's called a Phoenix with a Phoenix upgrade. It still is an Aquamaster, a U.S. diver's Aqualung Aquamaster, but often these are called Phoenix. And with that upgrade from Brian, it actually increases this section in here of the body and gives you low pressure ports, a high pressure port for an SPG, so now your regulator is modern. Also at the same time you can have the entire internals upgraded to make it a beautiful breathing regulator. It breathes quite frankly between you and I as good as most modern regulators today. And uh, so you can do all of that and then you'll have a good solid working regulator that you can take with you anytime, anywhere and enjoy and dive with. Okay? Okay, that's it. To summarize then, if you're collecting, displaying regulators, 
buy whatever you feel you need, what you want. Clean it up, put it on display. If you want to dive with it, pretty much, pretty much, you're restricted to two models, Voight and U.S. divers. And the later the model, the better. This is probably your best choice. More information, you can get a lot more information on that vintage uh, doublehost.com. And I don't work for Brian, I don't get paid. I just happen to know his information is accurate. And there's a lot on there. I don't know where he gets the time to do all of that. I know what it's like to put stuff on the internet. Anyway, there's uh, some tips for you on buying your first or maybe another vintage double hose regulator. Okay, guys, there you go. Alec Pierce, Menti Scuba, go crazy. Talk to you soon.